Hey, it's Matt Pitfield here, and joining me now is Mary Lou Lord. Mary, good to have you here on the show. Let's talk a bit about, uh, you know, the fact that there was such a, there was a lot of uh, time in between this album, and uh, I mean, in fact, the signing to work, and the stuff that you did with Kill Rock Stars. There was quite a bidding war. Was that how was that for you? Was it kind of a pain, or was it was it was it? Um, no, I think it was kind of fun. Uh, I got to meet a lot of uh, interesting people um, in the music business, and. Um, I, I would just kind of go and have these dinners with people and talk about music, which is something I love. And uh, sometimes, you know, I would meet some people and it would be quite obvious to me that they wouldn't really be getting it and I'd kind of shy away from them and move on to the next, uh, next gang. And um, at the time, it, there was a lot of shuffling going around um, in the music industry, a lot of indie bands getting signed, a lot of girls getting signed. And I figured that there might be some kind of backlash after that whole thing when, you know, Mo Austin and Lenny Wonker were leaving Warner Brothers at the time and it was just too much of a shuffle. So I decided to just take my time and meet all the labels and see what was up and I just wanted to avoid any kind of backlash after all those bands got signed. I didn't want to get caught up in, I, I just didn't want to get dropped and I didn't want to lose my A&R person, whoever that might be. So I held tight and um, waited for the right time. It was a good move as far as I'm concerned because you see how it always runs in cycles. Tons of bands get signed or artists when something successful formula and all of a sudden everybody gets dropped and it's just it's a mess, yeah. you know? It's yeah. a lot of people's music and lives at stake there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're gonna be back with Mary Lou in a minute. Right now we have the latest from Fastball from the album All the Pain Money Can Buy. This is the way on 120 Minutes. 120 Minutes, I'm Matt Pinfield and I'm here with Mary Lou Lord. Hi, Mary Lou, after the couple seven inches and, and uh, the EPs, Mary Lou Lord and Martian Saints, and then uh, working on the uh, latest album, you worked with one of you who's considered kind of an idol of yours and one of your best friends, Nick Salmon, right, from Bevis Front? Yeah. Let's talk yeah. about that. Now, he, did he write about four songs on the album himself? Um, yeah, and then we co-wrote, I think, three, and then the rest were my own. And, um, yeah, Nick Salmon, he is essentially a band called the Bevis Front. He's right. a Englishman, and I, I would say they've got about 14 records out, yeah. and he put them all out on his own label called Warnzo, and he also publishes a fantastic um, magazine, fanzine, called the Potalamic Terrascope, right. and uh, it, there's a lot of psychedelia um, that they concentrate on, but uh, they'll also do really cool stuff, like talk about Guided by Voices or Olivia Trauma Control and Neutral Milk Hotel back-to-back -back with, like, Sandy Denny or Tiny Tim or something. Right, bringing back some of the 60s stuff with some of the new Yeah, ones. so it's, and it's just, it's great. It's like a small version of Mojo, which is my favorite magazine. It's one of my favorites, too. I yeah, love it. it's awesome. I love when they go back to that month of that year and they show you the charts and everything. It's amazing. Yeah, so Ooh. Nick Solomon, he's a fantastic songwriter, and I just, I went over to London. I was there for about a month, and we got going on the record, and um, I was a little bit, I really didn't want to go into this thing alone. It's, it, I was petrified, really. I came... I played for years in the subway on acoustic guitar and wrote these songs and I needed somebody to go into this with and I could think of no better person, no better songwriter that I knew of um, that was more deserving to go into a project like this with me that would, it had to be Nick Solomon, so I love out. him. It worked out great, that's excellent. All right now let's check out your latest video, the first video from God in the Shadow, in fact. It's Mary Lou Lord and Lights Are Changing here on 120 Minutes tonight. Pivot here with my special guest, Mary Lou Lord. Now, you've had quite a few friends play on the record, too. Um, Sean Colvin does a track on there with you, right? Yeah. Which is great. And uh, Elliot Smith, who was a label many years on Kill Rock Stars, I think is great. And, uh, and always happy. That's that's, fantastic. That's Shake Sugary, right? I mean, that, is that inspired at all by that Jerry Garcia song from his first solo album, Sugary? Because it goes shake uh, it, shake it, sugary. Right. Well, it's a song written by Elizabeth Cotton, right. who was this, um, she was from, uh, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, right. um, and she was actually Pete Seeger's maid, and uh, they didn't know that she was a musician, and they caught her dusting and then playing the banjo, and uh, they were like, oh, Libba, we didn't know, so they hooked her up with a record deal, and um, she was very inspirational to Jerry Garcia. She was his favorite guitar player, wow. and uh, so she wrote Freight Train, and she wrote that song that I covered on the record called Shake Sugary, and I'm sure that Cherry Garcia was definitely inspired to write that tune by her. By her, right? For yeah. her solo record, right? That's yeah. really interesting. It's, it's, a, it's a really sweet song, and um, I've heard it's a 
kind of a, a folky tune, but it's it's just so lovely that I couldn't avoid putting it on the record. And then, of course, Elliot Smith and his stamp of guitar playing is all over it. And it's really beautiful. I love it. Yeah. That's excellent, by the way. Stick around, because when we uh, return to 120 minutes, we'll have more with Mary Lou Lord and a brand new one from Pulp. That's a great story. Yeah. That's cool. Oh. Hi, this is James Eha, and... Welcome back to 120 Minutes. I'm Matt Pigdale, and I'm here with my guest, Mary Lou Lord. Mary, how did you end up hooking up, uh, you know, after playing in the subways and playing in Boston, um, with uh, Tanuvial and Slim Moon from, uh, from Kill Rock Stars in the first place? How did they find out about you? Um, well, I had met Kathleen Hanna over the phone through yeah. a friend of mine, so yeah. I, you know, was kind of friendly with her. And then uh, about a year later, after meeting Kathleen over the phone, I met yeah. Tanuvial at a party yeah. in Boston. And uh, it, it was a pretty lame party, so we decided to leave. And <laughs> she was visiting her parents. They lived in Boston yeah. for the summer. And we hung out, and I'd play in Harvard Square, and she'd just come down and, and watch. And we were, we were girlfriends. And then she sent me a letter saying, I really miss your voice. Will you make me a tape? So I made her a tape, and I put it right on a boombox tape. And uh, she said, would you mind if we put one of your songs on the compilation? So I was like, no, not at all. So they put uh, the tune, it was called Camden Town Ride, right from the boombox onto their compilation. And then she said, um, I talked to her about a month later, she was like, I don't just miss your voice, I miss you. Please come. So I went to uh, Seattle to visit her, and we became, you know, we got reunited. And from there, I met Slim Moon and all the other guys at Kill Rock Stars. And a great, great bunch of people, great label. And I had a really good time in Olympia. Yeah, it is an excellent label. It's yeah. great. That's all went up to now. I also thought it was really cool. You did a Freddie Johnston song, too. Yeah, well, well like he's that. a great songwriter. You've been a fan of his for a long time? Like, since yeah. Since really Yeah. Yeah. Um, that song, it's not one of his, you know, most popular songs. It's called The Lucky One, but it is, it's a really, it's a sweetheart of a song. Yeah. And uh, I had to do it. And then people consider you somewhat of a bit of a DJ, because you love to play other people's songs, and you're a big music fan. And you love to keep the songs from fading into obscurity and make sure people get to hear them. Well, I think it's important, and it's part of a, a tradition, especially a folk tradition. And, um, you know, the lyrical content of folk music is so important. And in the tunes that I cover, I, I try to, you know, keep in mind that they have to be re really lyrically based, you know. So it's a tradition, and people, sometimes I get kind of flack for it once in a while, but I remind people that, Dylan did it, the Rolling Stones did it, the Beatles did it with all that Gene Vincent Carl Park and stuff. Yeah. And Hank Williams did it. Love Sick Blues, that wasn't even his song, you know, and right. I don't know who wrote that tune, but whoever it was that wrote it, you know, surely benefited from it in one way or another. And maybe they didn't, but that was back in the day. But these days, you know, with publishing rights and stuff like that, people do benefit from it. And uh, it's a tradition that I think has been lost. And it's not that I can't write, it's, it's just that I have to get this out of my system. Right. And that's what those guys did with their first records. And I think in order to be a, a really terrific songwriter, you first have to be a really big fan. And I'm going through my fan phase now, so. Yeah, I think it's excellent, by the Thank way. Thank you. If you haven't already, you should definitely pick up a copy of Mary Lou Lord's new album, Got No Shadow, and be sure to catch her on tour. Up next, we have the 120 Minutes debut from Pulp to the title track of the new album, This is hardcore. It's brand new in 120 minutes tonight. Mary Lou, thanks for coming on. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Take two.